VR video tutorial on the susceptible exposed infected recovered mortality model. We're still working with the COVID-19 data. We're maybe five or six videos into this. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we are going to look at projecting forward. So extrapolating the model. And I know most statisticians, when you hear the word extrapolation, you, uh, we all cringe. And uh, I'm in that camp as well. However, one of the points of using one of these models is to make predictions about what's going to happen. And lots of people want to do that. So we need to say... Well, our extrapolation is just based off the data that we have, and we should take them with a grain of salt. They should not be treated as this is exactly what is going to happen because this is a model and all models are wrong, but some models are useful uh, according to George Box. All right, so here we go. We're going to pick up with the code we had last time. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. We've made it a function. We've uh, plotted it. We've uh, read in our data. We've tuned our data. And I actually tuned the data a little bit more since the last video to make it look better. So I'll give you the quick values here. If you look at what I did here, you can see what my values look like. That one doesn't look so horrible. It's not perfect. And it's not going to be perfect just due to the, the model itself. Okay, let's see how the recovers looked. Uh, they missed down here, but sort of pick it up up there. Uh, so does it go through the middle of the data? Kinda. Uh, is it the best? No. But does it useful at the moment? Kinda. So this is our deaths data as well, and it fits a whole lot better than what we had before. And remember, we were just tuning the model. We're not fitting it yet. We're going to wait to fit it for a couple more videos because what we want to do is we want to add in an intervention and I think that's really important here because during this time frame these parameters are going to have changed due to policies that have been instituted such as social distancing and things like that and we can actually quantify those and add them into our model which is what we'll try to do next but the first thing we need to do is figure out what's going to happen in the future. And this is going to be really, really easy to do. So all we're going to have to do is take our current code that we currently have, and we're just going to copy and paste it. Okay. Copy it and paste it. And bingo. So this is where we're going to forecast into the future. also known as extrapolation. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a new variable and I'm going to call it N2. And this is out how far I want to go. I want to go 200 time periods out. Okay, I'm just going to take my exact model that I have before. I'm going to make N1 equal to N2. So it's going to take my data and it's going to push it farther out Okay, than my actual data. So here I'm going to run uh, things out and I have to pay attention to the the sizing of everything but, it, but it'll work so here I'm going to first run my model out and then I'm going to add the points to it so I'm going to flip this over and it's also a good exercise for you to see how to flip this over so I'm going to first plot my model which is going to go from 1 to n2 and I'm going to color it red, and I'm going to make it a plot. Let's see here, plot. And I'm going to make it a type equals L. Then I'm going to change my data. Well, now it says plot. I'm going to change that from plot to points. And that will put the points on the picture. Okay, and if I do this here real quick, you'll see what it does. So this runs things out. The dots are my points in my data, and then this is the projected trajectory from where we're going for this infected group, active infections. So based off the parameters that we have right now, this is what we're looking at. We're going to do the same thing here, but right now I'm just going to go with points because I want to see everything together on the same picture. Like when we started, we started looking at the dynamics of this. So again, I'm going to take for my data, I'm going to do points, and then I'm going to do lines for this, but it's going to go to N2, right? Because uh, 
anything that's a projection goes out to 200. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to pull this in and change this to points, and it should do everything I need it to do. And it will show us the scenario as we go out into the future so we can see what's going to happen. Okay, uh, did we – oh, so here I forgot I didn't change that to N2, which you got to remember, change it to N2 because I just told you to and then didn't do it. All right, so here's what we see from for 200 days out from January 22nd. So keep in mind that sometime out at the end of July, early August – if these parameters are true, which they're not, we know they're not, because we can look back at how well our model fit, this would be the trajectory. Now, this is one of the ways that we're going to look at the future. We're going to see what's happening and how our data matches that. And this is one way to come up with these models and what it would say would happen. But, you know, notice that this is kind of crazy. This, this number here is, you know, a whole bunch of, there's eight zeros behind that thing or eight zeros there, uh, which is, uh, what, 200 million people? No, I don't think that's true. But based off the data and of the model that we've chosen to fit our data, that's where we're at. Now, what we want to do is get a better model, okay? We're, we've got sort of a base model here. What we can do is we can add this idea of an intervention in, and that's what we're going to do in the next video so that we can take and adapt to changes in the sort of regime that is driving the underlying process because due to social distancing, we would guess that this alpha value is going to be getting smaller. There's going to be less mixing of people. So that's what we're going to do in the next video. So see you there.